Welcome back to the Air Canada Centre, everyone. The Leafs and the Columbus Blue Jackets here tonight. And the superheroes of the string saunas tonight, James Reimer gets his second consecutive start, 6-2-0 against uh, the opposition thus far this season. And Sergei Bobrovsky, who is 7-10-2, gets the call for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Obviously, the Toronto Maple Leafs thrilled to have Tyler Bozak back in the lineup, and he'll go right back to where he was before he was injured, of course, on the big line with Kessel and James Van Riemsdyk. Bobrovsky is 4-1-0 against the Leafs, including the 5-2 win in Columbus this year. This is the first time James Reimer has ever faced the Blue Jackets. Bobrovsky's been struggling of late, letting in one bad one a game, and it's been one of the reasons why the Jackets have been struggling. And of course, with all their injuries right now, they're having an awful time scoring goals. Dubitsky out, Gabrick out, Nathan Horton, of course, still out. And probably late December or early in the new year before they'll get healthy with the, at least Gabrick and Horton. Ryan Pachmara of Detroit, Chris Lee of St. John, New Brunswick are the referees. Greg Dvorsky of Guelph and Beauport, Quebec's Johnny Murray are the linesmen as it is launched down into the Columbus zone right off the bat. Into the corner goes Chutin and it is played around on the near side. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Let's go down into their own zone and Carl Gunnarsson plays it around back of the net. Both teams getting their first change organized. Pass ahead for Kadri. Kadri banks it ahead. And Clarkson, in his endeavor to shoot it in, had to go into the Columbus bench. And so with 41 seconds, play the face off in front of the bench. Well, shots on goal can sometimes be a misleading stat. I'd prefer chances to score against a goalie. However, on Saturday night, I think you can say both. The shots were high, and obviously the chances to score were there as well as James Reimer was absolutely outstanding against the Washington Capitals on Saturday night. Sent down into the Toronto zone. Franson given a bit of a jolt there. Tries to restore order. A couple of hits on Matt Calvert. And it is pushed ahead and Van Riemsdyk is out along with Gardner. Trying to flow it in there, but Gardner couldn't take the chance when it was partially blocked at the blue line. Franson chases after Calvert. Calvert trying to center. Gets it back on his stick. Another shot and off a pad. It goes wide of the net. Van Riemsdyk starts back at center and gives it off to Kessel who banks it in over the line. He goes into the corner after it against Ryan Murray. Here's Bozak getting it back to him. Centered in front of the goal. Backhand by Bozak and he couldn't get good wood on it. Bozak a cross ice pass. Riley will bank it around back of the net. Kessel couldn't chip it out in front. And so now turning with it is James Wisniewski and he'll get it out into the center rights area. Fraser. On for Riley. Riley sends a shot wide to the goal, far side for Jay McClement. McClement works the board, got it freed up for Mason Raymond. Raymond trying to play it back. Kuhlman tried to help out, but it is pushed out and down the ice. Gardner coming off the bench will bring it back to the Toronto goal. Up the middle it goes to Raymond. Laid off the boards at center, and shot right back into the Toronto end. Gardner. Right wide for Franson. Franson returns the favor. And up the middle, it's deflected high, but off the glass. Still in play. Round back to the net for David Savard. And it's back out into the center ice area. Kuhleman leaves it there for Mason Raymond, who shoots it right back in. Bobrovsky gave it away or sends it around back of the net. And it's up onto the right wing side once more. And so Prout just coming back to the lineup. Unable to get it into the Toronto zone with any degree of order. And here's Dion Phaneuf turning. Phaneuf leads the Leafs with a plus 11 rating as it is launched down into the Columbus zone again. Back of the net, David Savard tied up. Jenner starts back at center with a pass. Here is Ryan Johansson in over the line. His speed hit a skate, and Fraser McLaren trying to free it up there for Smithson. Now it is Carl Gunnarsson launching it down into the Columbus zone. Fedor Tutin up on the right wing side, and Nick Polino 
Gets to the red line but couldn't get it past Lupo. Turning with it is Nazem Kadri. Former London junior comes to center. Kadri across the line and had it poke checked off his stick. Sprawling there was Gardner, but an errant pass for Cam Atkinson ruined the opportunity, which would have been a two-on-one. Calvert around to the near corner. Tied up there by Gardner. Now Franson in there as well. And the puck knocked out into the center ice area. Is going to be shot right back in again by Tutin. Gardner. Back in the net for Franson. Up the middle for Kadri. Long pass for Lupo. Lupo with a nifty move to get it over the line. And that quick shot handcuffed Bobrovsky, but he got enough leather in front of it to knock it wide of the net. But he stumbled there. Here's Kadri back to the goal. A couple of glances and then fans on the pass. Riley can't help him out and is trapped because of it. The test in over the line with a shot. And that was stopped by Reimer. He had Atkinson going to the front of the net but elected to shoot. Leads back in with Clarkson. Clarkson to an open wing. Mark Fraser trying to get there. He gets caught as well, but Clarkson filled in for him this time. So the Leafs weren't in an odd man situation, and it didn't develop anyway. Great job, Joe. Keep going. Yeah, thanks. Oh, good. One of you guys is going to have to talk. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Die-hard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Shot down into the Columbus zone. Greg Mellon really is here somewhere. He's up for, oh, there he is. Near side for Carl Gunnarsson. Took the shot. That went well wide of the net. But enough unable to trap it to keep it in. Comes back at center to regroup. Gunnarsson got it ahead, but unable to knock it in a little further. There was Bozak, and it's down in over the line now for Bo Generous shot. And that was picked away by Reimer. Pushed out into the center ice area, but Kessel couldn't get it away from Nick Felino, who cut across. Now here's Felino, the former Ottawa senator, coming to center and across the line. Drops for Jenner, and the shot went off a leg wide and bounds out into the center ice area. Pretty loose start to this game, Joe, as the Blue Jackets have had now three excellent chances. And James Reimer, again, he's had to be very sharp as the whistle goes there. A couple of breakdowns. Riley, first of all, jumps in without any support behind him here. A little tip by him. And then a two-on-one break, an offside winger as well. An excellent play there. And then Jenner afterwards kicks that leg, tries to get... James Reimer down a little bit early, and Reimer with an excellent right pad save on the youngster. Two big saves early, and one to start the game also right in the slot before that. Dad was driving the tractor on the Dorchester farm 20 years ago for the Daniel Boone song, and a week later, Boone was born in Vesley, Maine. Around back of the net, grabbed off there by Savard, played ahead at center. And the Jackets get it to the line, and in over the line for Atkinson. A long shot as well wide of the goal. Rebound up on the right wing side, pushed out at center. Onto the left wing for Jay McClement. He has a man going to the net, and Cody Franson who tries to center, and a penalty is coming. Franson going to the net was hooked, and so the Leafs will go to the first power play opportunity of the game. in the penalty box for hooking. He's going to get caught right in the offensive blue line here. Tries to keep the puck in. Misses and then there is the hook on Kuhlman. And the Leafs get a pretty good chance to score because of it afterwards. Sliding it in front of the net. And here's this hook again. Kuhlman just jumps by. And a little hook there. Sweet power play continues to be great at home. And you have to love their puck movement and the way they are not stationary. Most nights on it. There a shot from the blue line by Fanuf goes wide of the net. Bozak does not join his mates on the first power play unit. They've got Lupo working with Van Riemsdyk and Kessel. And it's down into the Toronto zone. Leafs were 0 for 3 in their loss in Columbus against the Blue Jackets on the power play. Fanuf 
On to the left wing side for Van Riemsdyk. Rink wide pass. Trying to settle that down was Cody Franson, and it was knocked off his stick out at center ice. Here's Lupel getting away from one and now curving in over the line. Still with it, dropping it back for Franson. Franson swings it around back of the net. It'll come to the near side. Kessel settles it down. Works to the half boards. Being challenged there. Get some support from Lupel as it comes back to Fanuf. Over it goes to Franson. Franson with the shot. And a pad saved by Bobrovsky. Cleared to the line. And it's going to come out at center ice. Kessel waiting patiently for teammates to get onside. Now he's across the line and banks it in for Van Riemsdyk. Round the boards it goes to Jake Gardner. Gardner off the bench, back it comes to Fanuf. Fanuf's wrist shot is blocked. He'll get it freed up, but Kessel unable to keep it in. Knocked to high in the air off the top of the glass, and it stays in play, but is shot down the ice by Columbus. Gardner, long lead pass. Raymond just did get enough of that to prevent an icing. Now here's Clarkson giving it away. Trying to move it out was Johansson, but he was checked. And it bounces to the line and out. Morgan Riley couldn't keep it in. Now he eludes the checking there of Johansson. Brought back down the boards for Clarkson. Can't get it ahead of Ryan Murray. And Murray has sent it down the ice. Out at center ice comes Gardner. He'll hit the line, trying to work his way through. He had the puck, didn't realize it was almost on top of his boot. And it's to the Leaf blue line and will be backpedaled into the Toronto zone. Up ahead for Kadri. Kadri on to Mace. Mason Raymond across the line. Clarkson's going to the front of the net. It bounds wide off the stick of Bobrovsky. Kept in at the blue line by Mark Fraser. Penalty is over as it comes into the slot. Kadri with a shot and he fed it wide. Gunnarsson around back of the net for Clarkson. He's upended. Kadri comes away with the puck, though. Back to Mark Fraser. Over it comes to Carl Gunnarsson. He couldn't shoot it at the net, but keeps it in. He'll get a second whack at it. No, he won't. Far side for Fraser. A shot. That went wide. Now it is Gunnarsson again. In for Mason Raymond. And it's knocked off his stick and down into the Toronto zone. Gunnarsson turns quickly and starts out. No score. We're... 49 seconds away from the midpoint of the first period. And Reemsdyke almost had it knocked off his stick. It restores order. And now gets a little pass on the left wing that bounds over his stick. Play back in over the line for Felino. Felino down into the corner now for Johansson. Taken out of the play by Fraser. Bozak checking there against Umberger as it comes back to the net for Gardner. Play along the board. Van Reemsdyke doesn't get it out. And a weak shot goes well wide of the net. And Gardner has some skating room. A long bank pass looking for Bozak. That was well behind him. Humberger and Polino exchanging the puck as it's put high and down into the Toronto zone. Gardner around behind the net taking a look up ice as we've reached the halfway mark of period number one and no score. Now a long lead pass that had no chance of getting to anybody and there's an icing charge coming here this period brought to you by the new 2014 Toyota Camry our most remarkable Camry yet well, not a real effective power play you watch Johnson here on Kessel a lot of teams are doing this now as soon as he looks down a little bit they'll just gain tackle him right here right away not give him any time and space on the power play in the half boards and that should open up other players if Kessel can get it off a stick in a hurry when they chase him Centering pass, comes off a stick in front of the goal, they score! Reimer couldn't get across quick enough. And Atkinson is over on the far side to tap it home. Right off the faceoff, it's 1-0 Columbus. Well, this starts before this with Gardner ices the puck and a bad pass, which leaves the faceoff in the Leaf zone. They couldn't get the players they want on the ice. Gardner then gets the puck behind the net, overskates it, and then now goes the wrong way. Everybody's chasing the puck. One, two, three Leafs on the puck, and that leaves Atkinson wide open here. He takes it back. Nice set of hands up over top of James Reimer. Well, that was just poor coverage off the faceoff. It all starts with a face-off in the leaf zone because of a careless pass that created an icing to begin with. Sixth goal of the season for Cam Atkinson. 
And the native of Riverside, Connecticut, has given the Jackets a one to nothing lead. Down into the corner is Ryan Murray going around back of the net, coming out in front. They jam it into the goal. Two quick goals by Columbus. And it is two to nothing. Well, the Leafs Umberger, were, I think, is going to get the goal. Yes, he is, Joe. And the Leafs were flat coming out. They didn't get much going on their power play. The Columbus Blue Jackets gained a little momentum because of it. And now they just work the puck down low and again. Everybody's chasing the puck. Reimer doesn't find it at all in the slot. The only person that seemed to find it was Umberger. He falls once, then he sneaks in behind the defense. And just tucks it in past Fraser, who's lost his stick on the play before that. So he couldn't use his stick at all here to knock the puck out of hand's way. As you can see, Fraser's stick lying in the corner of the ring. Two goals, 20 seconds apart. And the Columbus Blue Jackets have staked themselves to an early 2-0 lead. But Testu and Murray draw assists on this one. So the Maple Leafs have dug themselves a sizable hole. I'll tell you one thing, Joe, in this period that I haven't liked. The forwards are way ahead of the defense on their breakouts, and the puck support just hasn't been there. And they've been having a difficult time getting out of their zone because of it. Rolled into the zone, and Jay McClement going in there against Tootin. Molino plays it to the line. Fanuf thought about standing in, but then has to chase it back and gets it freed up for Gardner. Jake Gardner coming to center and in over the line. Gardner going wide with a shot. There's a big rebound off Bobrovsky, but it's cleared, and this is going to turn into an icing. Yeah, no, it's not. No, didn't have enough to go. Out back to the near boards. Played around back of the net, trying to come out of it with Calvert. Calvert into the slot. It's got right on, and a save and diving, but unable to get it under the glove was Reimer. Now it comes around back of the net. Branson. Chipping it ahead, Clarkson trying to free it up. Gets some help from Kadri, and now Cody Franson finds a little bit of room and sends it deep into Blue Jackets territory. Jackets have outshot the lead, six to three, four, almost five there by Lupo, but it went wide of the net. David Savard plays it in, and Kadri got a fairly good hunk of him. Down goes. Clarkson with a hit from behind, and the puck is over on the far side. And the Keaton gets it to the line and slashes it in off Morgan Riley's stick. Protesto playing it around the boards. It'll play back to the blue line. Wisniewski, who leads the Blue Jackets in scoring, one of four defensemen to lead their teams in scoring in the National Hockey League at this point. 16 points for Wisniewski, two of which are goals. Ryan Murray on the far side and it's back out into the center ice area. Campbell in Florida, Subban in Montreal, and Carlson in Ottawa. Also defensemen that lead the respective teams in scoring at this point. Tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL. Well, the Jackets want to stay out of the box, so they got an early penalty against them, but it worked to their advantage, actually, so it was a nice kill for them. And that tempo early has not happened for the Toronto Maple Leafs against a team that's coming up towards the end of a road trip for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And here is where Fraser loses his stick. He gets all tied up for a test two, loses his stick, and the Jackets just take it towards the net. And some poor coverage in the slot, and Fraser can't use a stick to knock the puck out of harm's way as he didn't have one. Don't play this game without your cue. He's a defenseman. Yep. Or unable to get it out. Feathered back in by Tutin. And now here's Morgan Riley trying to play it around on the board for Fraser McLaren. He got it to the line, but not out. Now has it in his skates. Battles for it there along with Smithson. And the game played within about two feet finally ends up being over the blue line and then brought back in offside. Well, Todd Richards, one of the coaches for the U.S. Olympic team, so he'll be having a good peek tonight at the opposition. That is for sure Kessel and Van Riemsdyk, but he's got some more things to worry about as his team has been so hurt. I talked to John Davidson this morning, and 
you just say, man, we got to get healthy. We can't afford with the depth that we have at the moment to run into these injuries. And uh, his coaching record with the Blue Jackets is exactly at 500. 50 wins, 50 losses, 12 overtime losses. Here's a chance in front of the goal. And it was fed in front of the net by Van Riemsdyk, but no contact made. Now Kessel from a sharp angle in front of the net. That got through Bobrovsky, but he got just enough of it to redirect it past that far post. Gardner down into the corner. Bozak turns, is upended, and the puck comes out at center ice with Cam Atkinson getting it to the blue line. Will be sent back in again by Atkinson, who now peels to the bench. Change is coming for the Blue Jackets, who lead two to nothing. Kessel swung in front of his own goal, now brings it to the line, drops off for Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk pulls up, sends it back to the net for Tyler Bozak. Bozak banking it back to Dion Fanuk, kept in with his skate, but then it went off his skate and out at center, and Boone Jenner trying to get to it. Bozak back checking will play it out at center. Rattled around the boards and down to the far side. Waiting patiently for it there was Mason Raymond. He gets it ahead. Here's Kuhlman in with a shot. That is ramped off the stick of Wisniewski and up into the screen. Out of play. 2-0 Blue Jackets here in the first. Well, the big boys for the Toronto Maple Leafs struggling a little bit at late. And the coaching staff is hoping that Bozak will help out Van Riemsdyk Van Kessel. Rubbed it up a little bit here in the latter half of this first period. A couple of chances here, and what a save by Bobrovsky. He just got enough of it on that Van Riemsdyk shot from the slot. It goes through him and out the other side. A bit of a break for the goalie there. Sergei Bobrovsky has a little more motivation going for him tonight. Nikolai Boroshevsky is in the house, keeping an eye on Russian players for the Olympics. Bobrovsky currently has the best save percentage of any Russian goalie in the National Hockey League, despite not having the kind of season he had a year ago as it's centered in front, bounces past Van Riemsdyk. Behind the net, Murray. Chopped at there by Bozak. It comes to the line. Kept alive by Fraser, and it's around back of the net again. Far side, it comes to the fire. Boards, unable to handle it there was Bozak. Launched high into the air to center ice. Riley. Restores it over on the far side. Fraser sending it in, but it's going to be an icing charge against Toronto with 4.36 to play. UEFA Champions League Soccer returns to Sportsnet tomorrow at 2.30 with three games. Let's start off with the Sportsnet East Ontario Western Pacific game. Arsenal versus Marseille. Celtic versus AC Milan on Sportsnet. One and on Sportsnet World FC Basel from Switzerland versus Chelsea. That was a busy promo. Got a lot of games going on. It's a clean sheet right now. Oh, clean sheet, yeah. Not a clean sheet here for the Maple Leafs. Down two to nothing on goals from Atkinson and Umberger. Back of the net for Reimer. Second time that he's faced 50 shots the other night. As first occasion was against Ottawa back in April of 2013. And in both games he gave up just a solitary goal and won the game. Jack Johnson carries to center. A little bit too high on the shoot-in. Ends up going into the screen out of play. And it'll be brought back into the center ice area. When you have two goalies going, the one disadvantage a little bit is one player handles the puck a little bit better, and that would be Bernier and then Reimer. And here's an example here where perhaps this play would have been hard around. And that's one of the areas where Reimer's really improved. There's no doubt about it. But he's not Bernier in terms of the way he handles the puck. It's not a bad thing as much as the defense have to adjust for who's being playing goal in, in a given night. And that would be an adjustment. You've got to be alert. Everybody has different tendencies. And uh, certainly Bernier is very adept at uh, handling the puck. James Reimer working on it diligently. And another icing call here. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. Face off to the right of James Reimer. Jay McClement. 
Lost the cross, sent it out back to the net, cut off by Gardner. Gardner tied up there along the boards, got it free, but now looks for some skating room. Back into traffic, sends it into the near corner. Branson getting there first. And decides what he wants to do with it, played it ahead, and it's tipped out at center ice. Raymond with McClement and Kuhlman. Kuhlman with the chance, shot it wide off the leg, and as it rolls in on Bobrovsky, he is going to cover up on it. And the Keaton slow to get up. He may have blocked that shot. He did. From uh, Kuhlman, and Kuhlman got a lot of it. Play by Raymond here in a three-on-two break. Kuhlman gets it away in a hurry, and... and Nikita turns his foot, and as soon as he did that, he got it right on the ankle. And we'll see how long he stays in the game. That one had to have hurt. 27 years of age, and uh, I'm sure Nikolai Boroshevsky is keeping an eye on him, too. Off the boards to center ice. Wiley got trapped. Here's in over the line now for Umberger. Umberger chased by Mark Fraser, centering, and Wiley took it away from him. Out at center, it goes for Van Riemsdyk. He'll shoot it in, but it went off a stick and ends up in the crowd. And out of play, 3.06 to play in the first period. Leafs trailing 2-0 to nothing to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And Riley does a great job of, he gets himself in trouble, but he can also skate himself out of trouble because of his great ability to turn and read plays. And a nice little shift here as Frazier goes for the one man. Frazier takes his spot, good smart heads up defensive play, and then Riley ends up with the puck because of down into the zone goes Colton Orr. They'll play it up on the right wing side, and it is fed ahead at center ice for Jack Skilly. He'll send it down into the Toronto end. Skilly gets to it back of the goal. Now here, Skilly working it back to the blue line. To the near side it comes now. Shot by Wisniewski went wide of the goal. Into the corner for Chapu. Around back to the far side. Now over on the near wing for Wisniewski. A pass into the slot. Unable to get the shot away, and it comes free, and it is Fraser McLaren just dumping it in over the line, now trying to hustle after it as the Leafs change. Murray drops it off and up on the right wing side. It comes once more, sent in by Kraut. Banging in there is Knuff, along with Boone Jenner. Dorchester, Ontario native, got it freed up. The Leafs are able to come away with it. Loop will turn. Lupel a bank pass, chipped in over the line by David Clarkson. Cadre goes into the corner after it, but can't get it away. Polino has spent it around on the far side. Clarkson arrives on the scene, took a shot, and it was wide. Down the near boards comes Carl Gunnarsson to keep it in. Clarkson back of the goal, looking to come out in front, can't, and it is dug out away from him, and Polino starts back at center ice. Polino across the line, dropping it off. Trying to go to the net is Johansson with a backhand. That was tough. Jenner ran into his man and then knocks down Kadri. They start jamming at one another. Lupo loses the puck, but the shot attempted by Jenner had his stick with it at the last second. Kadri after it. It's going to go off the side of the goal, so there's no icing. I think the linesman may have thought that the goaltender actually touched that. That is the side of the net. Branson, ahead for Kessel. Kessel gets it on the left wing side, and here's Gardner across the line with less than a minute to go in the period. Rounds back to the net, Ryan Murray to the line, a shot blocked, and turning it high into the air, looking for Calvert was Atkinson, but they weren't able to work that alley-oop to effectiveness. Now here it's Kessel back the other way. Gardner is into the rush. He'll take it around back to the goal. Too well covered there. Ryan Murray starts back up at center. And a pass on the right wing side comes in on the right wing. And Atkinson has it offside as Umberger was in on the left wing. This period brought to you by the new 2014 Toyota Camry. Our most remarkable Camry yet. One of the reasons you have a player like David Clarkson is in a game like this, when your team is flat, his job is to go out, create some energy, and make something happen with his leadership abilities. Let's see if he does that here, if not late in this first period, early in the second. Somebody has to create energy, energy for this group right now, because quite frankly, the Leafs have not shown a lot of it in this first period. Shot goes wide of the goal to the near side, kept alive by Jack Johnson. 
Johnson curls around back of the net, trying to come up with a shot, and it went off enough skate and went dangerously wide of the goal. Played high, it's going to end up in the crowd with 3.8 seconds to play. Period number one. A bit of a trap game, you know, you come off the game with you maybe shouldn't have won on a Saturday night with lots of energy. A Monday night game, a quick turnaround against Columbus. You think it might be easy, and this is always a result. And Columbus is 2-7-3 and three in their last 12 and took it on the chin in Vancouver. This ends a fairly lengthy road trip. They'll go home after tonight. But they have grabbed a 2-0 first period lead on goals by Atkinson and Umberger, both with their sixth of the season. Let's go to Darren in the panel. Here at the ACC in tonight's first period summary brought to you by Future Shop for the season's hottest gadgets at the best price guaranteed. Head to futureshop.ca. Season's gadgets from Future Shop. Both Atkinson and Umberger with their sixth goals of the season and a 2-0 Columbus lead. Scott Morrison's got more down below. Well, thanks, Joe. Randy Carlisle's talked a lot in recent days about preaching and pleading with his players to direct pucks at the net, to drive the middle lane, and to stop being so cute, especially entering the offensive zone. Well, they've managed to reduce their giveaways over the first 10 games of the season. They averaged 15 per game. They brought that down by five to an average of 10 in their last 13 games. But there were still seven in that first period, and a lot of cute play, as Randy Carlisle will call, will call it. And this is Nazem Kadri taking it in, trying to beat a one-on-three, turns it over. And again, the Leafs just having trouble penetrating the offensive zone because they're not getting pucks deep. Joe? Thank you, Scott. Of those giveaways, three have been credited to James Reimer. I didn't realize they kept that stat on goalies. <laughs> now you know, Now Joe. I know. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look at the goals in the first period. Atkinson left wide open after Gardner iced the puck and then got out of position. And then Fraser loses his stick. The puck goes behind the net. And Umberger just picks up the garbage in front. Reimer never does find the puck, and it's in behind him. And a 2-0 lead for the Blue Jackets after one period. I have upgraded the statistical information. It is now nine giveaways, and Columbus had one. The ice time leaders, Jack Johnson, eight minutes and 50 seconds for the Blue Jackets, and Jake Gardner for Toronto, eight minutes and 26 seconds. Here's Kuhleman turning, he's got McClement breaking, but the pass was behind him and off his skate as it comes around on the near side. Ryan Johansson gets it out into the center ice area. Carl Gunnarsson launches it down into the Blue Jacket zone. Clement frees it up. A pass in front of the goal by Raymond doesn't work to the blue line. Purposely shot wide of the goal by Gunnarsson, but unable to tap it home was Kuhleman. There's Mason Raymond in front. Now it comes back for McClement. McClement turns away from one, still has it. Eludes a second, banks it back. Carl Gunnarsson trying to get it back from McClement, and it's rolled into the corner. Jack Johnson goes after it, and it'll be played up on the near side, and Johansson starts back for the Blue Jackets, and it's out into the center ice area. Quickly returned by Toronto. Raymond unable to get it deep, and so Gunnarsson goes to the puck. But up on the wing for Kessel. Kessel looks up ice, finds Bozak. Couldn't get it into the zone. And it is turned over there for Atkinson to play it up at center. Gobbled up by Van Riemsdyk. Across the line. Pushed back to center ice and then launched down into the Blue Jacket zone. The Leafs will get a change going here. Shots are 7-5 in favor of Columbus. Up wing side for Anisimov. Sent down into the corner. Quick shot from a sharp angle by Anisimov, went wide of the net. Back out into the center ice area for Wisniewski. Ryan Murray, wink wide. Como sent it in over the line. Gardner finds Franson. Franson a pass up the middle. Chipped to the line, but not in deep. Murray's going to bring it back. The Leafs are going to have to try and change on the go. Now they get a chance with Cody Franson in. He doesn't shoot it when he did it, went off the stick. Centering pass is blocked. Fed to the line, but not out. 
Gardner to Franson. Wrist shot coming. And it's off the skate of Murray wide of the goal. Franson unable to keep it in. And Gardner's speed is able to get there ahead of Umberger. Head into the Toronto end. And Gardner is with it again. Out of Franson. Up the middle it goes to Kadri. Kadri a pass to flex in off uh, David Clarkson. Leaves going into the four check with Lupo. Brown on the far side. Grabbed by Prout. He loses it to the near side for M Morgan Riley and back to the goal. Out Kadri. Back to the blue line. Here's Razor fanning on the shot. And it is brought out at center ice and a race for the puck. Latesto is in over the line. The drop pass and a shot. Scores! Jack Skilly finishes the two-on-one as Mark Fraser fanned on the shot at the blue line. And Fraser's having a difficult night, no doubt about it. He just overskates that puck. And away go the Columbus Blue Jackets on a three-on-one, basically. And Skilly, short side high, a perfect shot. I mean, he just absolutely finds a hole as Reimer's there, he's in position, puck rolling a little bit, and that enables Skilly to get it right up high over top of Reimer's shoulder. I am a little bit surprised, not that this has been Reimer's fault at all, as you look at Fraser's frustration. I'm a little surprised that Bernier's not in the game here. Not so much because it's Reimer, but more than anything else, just to try to wake the team up a little bit. As I don't even think Carlisle looked down the bench. Third game for Skilly, his first goal of the season. His first point of the season. Here's Dion Phaneuf. Far side for Carl Gunnarsson. Long shot, blocked, a big rebound out in front. And it's back into the center ice area. The Leafs have not had a shot since final six minutes and ten seconds of the first period and now closing in on four minutes here into the second. Latestu gets the lone assist. There are the Blue Jackets in again rolling it in front of the net. It comes free and a shot blocking arm save made by Reimer and Bozak turns after taking a hit but loses the puck. Boone Jenner then is filled in by Cody Franson. Franson looking at Jenner with a few words as Jenner headed to the bench. Uh, Jenner's had a few guys going in. Phaneuf going in the first period as well as Phaneuf was chasing around the ice. Shooting up and over the line. The chance for Anisimov is stopped and Kessel works his way back at center. Kessel across the line missing a hit there from Shooting who closed ground on him quickly. Out back of the net for Bozak. Fed along the wall for Gardner. Gardner works off the half board. Centers it in front. Here's Morgan Riley unable to shoot it. Now he does and it's blocked. Rebound to the near side to Gardner, and a shot to catch just by. Bozak got a piece of that. Riley keeps it in. Down back of the net. Van Riemsdyk ties his man up. Bozak gets a hunk of his. Shooting trying to play it back of the net, and he does. And Jack Johnson now will play it to the line and get some assistance to get it out. Although well, the Leafs are down 1-0 in this second period. The Jackets have outscored 28-14. Just went wide of the goal as Bobrovsky was unable to come across, but now here is Jack Skilly back out again. Skilly going wide, cutting in front of the goal, and that was knocked into the corner. Now you can get it out. <laughs> well, they're just walking around the fence. 28-14 is what I was trying to say that the Columbus Blue Jackets have been outscored in the second periods, and, and Skilly here. Good play on Riley, and he just takes off. Now, this is still a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, there is no way he should be able to get around Gardner the way he does here. And then he gets a hooking penalty, Gardner, because he loses position on the play. So things go from bad to worse for the Maple Leafs. Here's the guys. Nick Kiprios and Doug McLean talk about Gardner's first period. And although he wasn't the man that initiated that play, way down on the far end of the ice. He certainly had to do a better job in the one-on-one -on -one there on that one. And right off the face-off, it's launched off a stick into the crowd. No penalty. We'll face it off in the circle to the left once more. And uh, there's still 14 minutes to go in the second period, but a power play goal here by 
Columbus would probably put this one completely out of reach. Unless, of course, we can find Tom Brady to come back for the second half. Shot off the leg goes wide. And it is played to the line and out by McClellan. Murray drops it back. Hitting the line there is Johansson. He'll feed it around to the near side. Gobbled up there by Umberger. Back to the blue line to Felino. Now on the far side, a pass back for Felino. Broken up but not clear. Still into the corner for Felino once more. Got it around on the far side. Hustling to it is Ryan Murray. Murray dishes it into the corner. Johansson works along the boards. Got it freed up for Felino. Pass back to the blue line on the near side of drive, and that was stopped. The rebound in front. It's still free there. And Gunnarsson takes it to the safety of the area beyond back of the net. Played on the boards for Felino. Back to the blue line it comes. Wozniewski gets the pass back in front of the net. Yeah. They score! Ryan Murray snaps the power play goal, and it is 4-0 Toronto. Excuse me, Columbus here in Toronto. And uh, no motion yet from Randy Carlisle or any kind of a goaltending change. Now this Murray is a real nice player for the Columbus Blue Jackets. A high pick a couple of years ago. And boy, does he right the lot one right off the, out the top corner, sneaks in. And why is he so open? I mean, a little low play. Everybody collapses way too low, and that leaves the kid wide open right in the slot. He just rifles it right over the top of James Reimer. One, two, three, four, leaves way down right below the hash marks. Third of the season for Murray, Johansson, and Wisniewski will draw the assists on the goal. And it is an enormous hill to climb now. Fraser. Drink wide too far for Kadri. This starts a busy week for the Maple Leafs. They're in Pittsburgh on Wednesday, Buffalo on Friday, and finish off in Montreal on Saturday. This is the fifth game of a five-game homestand for the Maple Leafs. who have won three and lost one going into it. Clarkson upended. Got to stick... Caught up in his arm is Como, and it's played around back of the net for Jack Johnson. Johnson to Tutin. Tutin gets it ahead on the left wing. And it's Matt Calvert playing it in over the line. Rams into the boards. Got it freed up for Morgan Riley. Played out into the center ice area then by Fraser McLaren. McLaren. Getting a piece of his man as it shot down into the Toronto zone. Long bouncing puck, and it's gone over the glass and out of play. Murray and Skilly have added second period goals to Atkinson and Umberger in the first. Well, there's a look at Ryan Murray, he was second overall in the 2012 draft. And a real nice pick for the Columbus Blue Jackets. One month ago tonight, he scores his first goal. And against the Maple Leafs, and here tonight he ends up with another one right in the slot. A perfect shot over James Reimer. An oxbow hunter in his uh, province of Saskatchewan, pretty accurate right there as well. Well, he hit the bullseye. And it is 4 0. Four. Will Junior and Everett, of course, great player for our World Junior team as well. Gardner back of the net. This is it off to Franson. Branson gets it up for Orr, Orr on to Smithson, and down into the zone it goes. The fourth line trying to get some hits going here and some energy. Back to the blue line, it comes to Cody Franson over on the far side. Gardner, he sends it purposely wide, but it's deflected by Bobrovsky away from harm's way in front of the net. Here's Orr, back to the blue line once more. Gardner tries to fake the move and does to get around Umberger, takes it to the net, shot is blocked in traffic, and then Gardner does a nose plant on the air. Canada sign back of the goal. Here's Orr coming out with it with Fraser McLaren. Stick goes flying into the corner. Leaves McLaren with a shot that's going to be gloved by Bobrovsky and with his defenseman without a cue that broke. He'll hold on. Pro 
Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megascore. Bobrovsky last year, the Vesna Trophy winner, and what a season he had. Save percentage, 932. And particularly with a team like the Columbus Blue Jackets still in the growth stage, he had a marvelous season. This year, not quite the same. The Jackets have been a little bit disappointed in him for the first quarter of the season. Still an awful good goal. Signed the big deal in the offseason. And his goaltending almost got Columbus into the playoffs last year. Here's Fanuk around back of the goal. He went 19-5-5 down the stretch that had dug themselves such a hole they could not get in. Ryan Johansson to center. Plays it off the body down into the corner. Johansson to the far corner to Polino. Back to the blue line it comes. Near side for Murray. Murray lost it but was able to knock it in. As Foreman couldn't take advantage of the miscue. Now he'll send a shot wide of the net. And Reamsdyke passed ahead. That went off Murray's skate, so it goes down into Columbus territory. A giveaway there as Lupo turns. Lupo high in the slot. Had a roll off the stick. He gains it, sends it across to the far side. Kessel coming off the bench, couldn't handle the pass. Lupo tried to tip it in front. Kessel plays to an open corner. Bozak. Round back of the net too far. Kessel unable to get to it. Mark Fraser collides down the boards but is unable to keep it in. And a whistle here has blown the play dead as it was touched by a glove at the league bench. Columbus full marks for a 4-0 lead. 4-0 lead for Columbus is without their star players. Gabrick, who has a knee injury, they're expecting him perhaps near the end of December or early in January. And look at the numbers this guy's put up in his career. Nathan Horton's in the building. He's nursing a shoulder injury. He's starting to come back now, and they're not quite sure when they're going to get him back completely. And then Dubinsky, we just put in the IR, IR as well, but has a foot injury. So the management team of the Blue Jackets have been a little concerned with their injuries, obviously with their stars out of the lineup, but they're up here tonight and looking pretty good. And uh, the Slovaks are looking forward to Gabrick being back in time for the Olympics. He's represented his country on 78 different occasions. And uh, Nathan Horton, 198 goals in 10 seasons. He, of course, coming over from the Boston Bruins, but has yet to play a game. He's missed every game thus far this season. Here's a centering pass, and Lupo launched it over top the goal. Kessel comes out of the corner with it, but couldn't get a shot as he was too well covered by Matt Culvert. And the Blue Jackets get it in over the line. And Isimov to the near side, and the shot went ripping wide by Fedor Tutin, and down the ice it goes. 9-12 to play in the second period. And an icing charge coming against Columbus will bring it back into the Blue Jackets' end. The Subway Super Series will head out west shortly. Russia versus the Western Hockey League All-Stars Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet East, Ontario West, and Pacific. The Leafs have had just two shots in the second period. And uh, the Blue Jackets now have a dozen. The Leafs have allowed 144 shots on goal, the third most in the league. Only Ottawa and Buffalo have allowed more. At the other end of the spectrum, the St. Louis Blues have allowed just 566 shots coming into action tonight. A pass on the wing for David Clarkson. Knocked down, Clarkson is able to chip it in front of the net from the seat of his pants. Franson gets it in along the boards. Now knocked down by Franson, he sends a shot well wide of the net. Cadre after it. may sound silly the way the Leafs are playing, but if they can get a goal or two here before the end of the period, and so far they haven't shown that they're even near the net, but if they can do that, this is a game where maybe in the third period, this is the fifth game in nine days for the Jackets, and they've been on the road. Left wing feed. Mason Raymond brings it in on the wing with a shot, an arm save made by Bobrovsky. Played to the line, Fanuf unable to keep it in. I don't know that they've had a good chance to score in this period, to be honest. No, I don't. That might have been it. We just saw it. I think that would be a chance, Joe, and most coaches would look pretty far out. No traffic in front. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> now here's a chance for Coleman. That was a good one, but he missed the net. 
Boone Jenner gets it down into Toronto territory. Gardner goes into the corner with him. Polino is able to come away with the puck on the collision and still has it. Nick Polino, born in Buffalo. Let us Sudbarians take him as one of ours after playing for his dad up there in Sudbury. And Polino has it again. Right wing side, Johansson. Sharp angle, stopped by Reimer. Johansson with it again. Back to the blue line it comes, and over on the near side for Ryan Murray. Shot deflects high in the air, and leaning back and gloving it is Reimer to hold for a faceoff with 7.14 to play in the period. No face it off in the circle to his right. There really hasn't been a lot of physical play or animosity in this game by any stretch. Well, on the Leafs, when you don't have anything going, you got to make something happen. And the Leafs have not taken any initiative so far to just try to make something happen. And that's why the big boys are out in the ice again for Randy Carrell. He'd like to see some bodies in at least. Murray, far side, gets it back again. Murray steps in with a shot. Reimer got a piece of that and went wide of the net. Humberger was stationed right on top of him. Into the slot now for Jack Skilly. Trying to flip it in front. Played around back to the net by Chapu. And now on the far side, Morgan Riley trying to get it up the boards but can't. It comes to the near side. Murray with it again. Offense from the defense has been a big part of the Blue Jackets here thus far. As Wisniewski leads them in scoring. And that this particular turn point, rather, their 10th goal from a defenseman, Murray scoring tonight. Maple Leafs have three, one of which was into an empty net. Talk to Cody Franson about that this morning. He's a little frustrated. He's had lots of chances. He'd like to get a couple, at least the first one. He thinks maybe that'll break the ice a bit for him. Gardner getting in front of the goal. The loose puck is still there. And it's taken to safety by Matt Calvert. Calvert. Works his way out with some skating room on the left wing. He'll bring it in on the left side, trying to go wide, sends the shot wide. Lupel starts back the other way for Toronto, but his pass is broken up. Atkinson there to send it out at center. Now Gardner had to wait for teammates to get onside. Kessel in with a shot. Pass a rebound, and it's knocked wide of the net. Bobrovsky with a good pad save. Pretty good scoring chance there for Toronto. Lupel. Back to the blue line to Gardner, and a shoulder save made by Bobrovsky, who's diving at that. Bounded down into the Toronto zone. A quick up, knocked by the glove of Lupul in over the line. Jack Johnson weaves back of the goal, and now brought out at center ice by the Blue Jackets with a pass on the left wing for Boone Jenner. Jenner takes it around into the corner. Lays it back to the goal, dug out there by Carl Gunnarsson, and Gunnarsson tries to lead a rush with a pass on the right wing, but it's out of the reach of Mason Raymond. Phaneuf, back to Gunnarsson, who will try it again. This time he hits Raymond with this pass, but it went off his stick. Raymond pushes it in behind the net. Played around on the boards, cut off there by the Leafs. Now a chance for Carl Gunnarsson coming in front, trying to spin to get a forehand away. And it is cleared on the back, hand out and down the ice. Mazes me many times how little confidence players in this era have in their backhand. The chance was there for a backhand shot and probably a good scoring chance. Gunnarsson felt more comfortable and more confident by spinning and trying to get the shot away on the forehand. Into the near corner, 4.05 left to play in the second period. Pass up on the wing for Kessel. Then over the line. Off the bench came Lupo, but the pass never reached him. And it is launched down into the Toronto zone by Blake Como. Yeah, Lupo's been with Kessel here a little bit more in this second period. You haven't seen much of James Van Riemsdyk the last couple of shifts. Here's Kessel in on the right side. Lupo going to the front of the net. Kessel in the corner centers, and it went right past everybody. 
Gardner had crept in there, but now the pass comes ahead to Calvert. Calvert with a pass to the far side. Jack Skilly, who has scored in the game. Centering it, hit the side of the net. Gardner and Franson come away with the puck. Cody Franson skating up. Franson to the line, and he'll just roll it in and get a player change going with 3-12 to play in the second period. Jackets scored twice in the first. They've added two in the second, and they lead it four to nothing. Smithson deflects it down into the corner. A hit there by Fraser McLaren. Orr has his man tied up. McLaren arrived on the scene, but the puck went free, and Jack Johnson into the corner. Now on the near side, Calvert is stepped into by Fanuf. The puck out at center ice for Skilly. Carl Gunnarsson chasing him. Skilly gets possession, now trying to hold on until some troops arrive after a change, but he loses it, and Gunnarsson starts out. Gunnarsson on to Fanuf. Fanuf to the red line, and in it goes, as Molino gave him a bit of a jolt heading to the bench. A quick up on the left wing for Como. Como got around Riley. Como coming to the front of the goal. Down is Reimer. And he got a pat on it. And then down goes Como as David Clarkson stepped into him. Como turning with it from a sharp angle off the stick by. Near side for Savard. Played down into the corner. Columbus battling with the puck there. Fraser tied up his man sufficiently. And a lead pass at center for Raymond. Raymond was speeding over the line, lost the edge. Cleared out at center ice. Minute 48 to play in the period. Kadri backhands it in over the line. David Clarkson trying to get around. Some interference there. Savard along the boards, can't get it out. Kept alive by Gardner, down the boards with Clarkson. Gardner in the corner, back of the net for Kadri. Kadri with a little head fake. Still has it, back to the blue line, Cody Franson, near side for Gardner, Gardner closes in, and the shot ramps off a stick and up into the screen, out of play. From Air Canada Centre in Toronto, you're watching Moose and Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Well, you wouldn't know it based on the way they played tonight, but they have not had a good start in any statistical area the Columbus Blue Jackets so far this season. But here tonight, it has been uh, letter perfect for Todd Richards' team, four to nothing. John Davidson and company looking on. Draw one, here's Franson, slipping it around into the corner for Lupo. Lupo tied up, able to get away momentarily but is tied up again and the puck's going to be won by Ryan Murray but he doesn't get it out. Gardner, Franson closing in, blocking arm save and a good one by Bobrovsky. Now it's gone high and over the glass out of play. 57.6 seconds to play in the period. Intact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Toronto Maple Leafs and all the fans who keep believing. Intact Insurance. You're back. And at the moment, it looks like Lupo is limping down the hallway. And there he goes. So that's certainly a concern for the Toronto Maple Leafs here late in the second period. He has had some back issues with some stiffness and some uh, spasms earlier in the season. Not sure if that's the case here, but he is... Off to the dressing room early. Kadri. Taken away by Boone Jenner. Then got it back again. Morgan Riley with a weak shot that goes wide of the goal. And it was played up on the wing by Jack Johnson and out at center. Kadri. Back for Morgan Riley. 25 seconds to go in the period to Mason Raymond. Raymond brings it to the line. Got in on the left wing. But Kadri, I think, is the one who was offside. Clarkson was straddling the blue line. And an offside with 19.7 seconds left in the frame. When you're not going well, a couple of things you have to do. You have to shorten your passes. They come out as five, and we haven't seen the Leafs do that at all to generate a little more speed. And you tend to try and solve it yourself. And that's what I'm watching here by the Leafs. They're all trying to do it by themselves and carry it by themselves. And instead of just getting the puck in deep and getting a four check going and have a look at it. 
Lupul's numbers and what he has done so far this year. And keep an eye on that situation, see if we can get some sort of an update from Paul Hedley on that one. Allen round back to the net. Here's Franson, just eight seconds left in the period. Van Riemsdyk sends it wide of the goal near side for Kuhlman. And it'll be played to center ice as the horn goes. So two to nothing in the first. Now four to nothing for Bobrovsky and the Blue Jackets after two. Let's go to Darren in the panel. Welcome back here to the Air Canada Center, and they could use a little of that emotion in the third period. They leaves trail four to nothing. Skilly and Murray scoring the goals in the second. Let's go downstairs again to Scotty Morrison. Thanks, Joe. He spoke with Leafs assistant coach Dave Farish, and he said it's just been a strange night, a weird feeling. He says there's no spark on the bench, obviously, or in the building. He felt like they got off to a decent start, but then those first two goals, 20 seconds apart, a couple of bad bounces, and a lack of execution on the Leafs' part. He says they just haven't been able to find their way since. Only 11 shots on the night, and if you go back to their last nine and two-thirds games, just 16 goals for for this team. He said Columbus, hard work, deep four check shots to the net everything the least want columbus has been doing joe thank you very much scotty and we're keeping an eye it does not appear that joffrey lupo will return for the third period he limped off uh near the end of the second period and uh, maybe this is where it happened yeah, right there guy good work for the guys in the truck to find out where it happened here he's battling for the puck here and then Lifts his leg there after the puck battle and goes right to the bench. See if we could pick it up here. And then he went and did some considerable pain off the ice and don't believe he's on the bench. Want to send a little shout out to a former Toronto Maple Leaf uh, equipment and trainer, Guy Kinnear, Gunner Kinnear, to his friends, his wife Rita up uh, in the uh, Owen Sound area, 83 years young. And I uh, want to say hello to Gunnar Kinnear up there. Long-time trainer with the Maple Leafs. We're going to get an icing charge here against the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Leafs have been shut out once this year by a 4-0 count. And that was the Vancouver Canucks. Tail end of the road trip out west. And this game... Has a lot of that feel to it. The Leafs really had very little energy that night. Roberto Luongo really didn't have an awful lot to do. Long shot to flex right on. Here's Jay McClement sweeping it in on goal, and that went off a leg wide. Kuhlman turns back in the corner. Kuhlman still with it. Kuhlman trying to get away from Fedor Tutin. He works into the near corner. Bank pass. Carl Gunnarsson. Dion Phaneuf. Back to Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson holds, then let a shot go that went over top of the net. Boom Jenner plays to the line, but not out. Kept in by Carl Gunnarsson again and around the far side. Phaneuf with a glance over his shoulder to get it in deep again. The Leafs have managed to get a change of players going. Back to the blue line and off the heel of the stick of Gunnarsson. Down the ice it goes. That's the energy that Randy Carlisle is looking for. Get the puck in down low behind Columbus' goal line. Start working their blue line a little bit, see how they respond. And Reemsdyke will shoot it in. Here's Kessel with a shot. Sharp angle try by Bozak was stopped by Bobrovsky. He didn't know where it was. Another shot wide of the goal from Franson. And it's out into the center ice area and down into the Toronto zone. There's no ice in the course because it was Franson's shot that went wide. And caromed off the end board. Calvert. Taken to the boards by Franson. Calvert pushes on and is stood up by Franson. And the Leafs are able to restore the puck but can't get it out. Fed back in and around to the far corner as the Blue Jackets will change. Bozak circles in the corner and heads to the bench himself. Take Gardner. Up ahead, tipped into the zone by Van Riemsdyk who goes to the bench. Clarkson hurries into the corner but can't come up with the puck. And it's to the line. 
knocked in there momentarily by Raymond. And the Blue Jackets get it to center and send it right back down. The two teams meet again later in the season here in Toronto. And the Leafs will not. Whoa, that tipped just wide of the goal. Bouncing puck to the far side and a shot goes wide of the Leaf net. Raymond got it out, but out of midair, a good play made there by the tester to knock it down, and the Blue Jackets get it back into the Toronto zone. Right around the boards and high stick catching Kadri there. In the corner it goes for Jabu. A viable player in the Memorial Cup. Youngster that is part of the future of this team. It gets the shot away, but it's going to ramp off a stick and go up into the screen out of play. Well, early in the period, it looked like the Leafs come out, came out with a little bit of jam. They had a couple of good chances. They were on the puck. Kuhlman, good puck recovery here. And then now they come out the next shift here, and Fraser just beats the heck out of the puck here, and it almost... Look out, goes in for a minute there. He almost tips it in, and that created a lot of problems. The Leafs never got out of their zone. Kuhlman off a face-off win. Plays it high into the neutral ice. Clement couldn't get it across the line. Bounced over Kuhlman's stick as well. Boone Jenner lays it in over the line. Gunnarsson for Toronto. Rink wide, backhanded into the zone by Smithson, who's on a line with McClement and Kuhlman now. Andy Carlisle juggling things up. Out at center ice it comes, and Felino trying to play it in. That's a high stick making contact, but a pretty good play nonetheless by Fanuf as he used like a tennis racket to keep it out of the zone. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. It has been a low shot game, 15 to 14 in favor of Columbus. Last two seasons, when the Leafs have recorded less than 20 shots on goal, their record is six and two. And they've outscored the opponent 21 to 15. But they have not been able to get anything in behind Sergei Bobrovsky. Played through the center ice area. Played offside, negated as the Blue Jackets get out of the zone. Bobrovsky has never shut the Leafs out. But is 4-1 and one, and a 2.21 goals against average in games against Toronto during his career, mostly with Philadelphia. 15.50 to go, third period. Kadri, Clarkson, and Mason Lehman. As the Leafs break it out with Kadri ahead to Raymond with speed in on the left wing. But getting his stick back in the way just in time. Dalton Prout. Back to the blue line for Morgan Riley. His shot hit a body in front of the goal. Then a shot by Fraser is deflected wide off the official. Back to the blue line. Fraser's not going to be able to keep that pass in. Riley at his own line. Got it ahead for Kadri. Kadri turns back for Riley. Onto the wing for Fraser who gains the zone. Sends it in wide of the net. Back of the goal is Clarkson who jams in there and was tackled from behind by Prout. They still are tangled up. And it is brought by Latestu and launched down into the Toronto zone. Jack Skilly hustling after the puck. Skilly coming around back of the net with a forehand shot that bounces wide. Kessel turns back up ice now for Toronto. Now play it in all the line and down into the corner it goes. Better Tutin pushes it ahead and it's out into the center ice area. Hansen getting it out. Now chipped back in again by Carl Gunnarsson. Bozak into the corner. And it's wrapped to the line. Phaneuf got in the way just to disrupt the attack there. Enough. Boone Jenner couldn't press it. Here the Blue Jackets back the other way with Jenner. Dropping it off for Atkinson. A long shot off the arm of Primer. And another shot ends up going wide. Played into the corner and around back of the net. 
Johansson, right to center, comes back with a point of pass into the slot. Jenner couldn't get a shot away. The Leafs trying to counterattack here with Kessel. Kessel coming through the neutral zone in over the line. Drops for Bozak. Bozak trying to feed it in around to Van Riemsdyk. It was quickly cut off and sent back out into the center ice area. Up ahead for Van Riemsdyk. Down into the zone it goes. Smithson into the forecheck. Into the slot it comes. Duck kept in by Franson. They whistle it down offside. And it'll be brought back into the center ice area. Sportsnet proud to present Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey from Air Canada Centre in Toronto. The UEFA Champions League Soccer returns to Sportsnet tomorrow at 2.30 with three games. And we've got uh, Arsenal and Marseille on Sportsnet East, Ontario West and Pacific, Celtic and AC Milan on Sportsnet 1. And on Sportsnet World, it's FC Basel and Chelsea. A big day of footy tomorrow right here on Sportsnet. Four to nothing, Columbus, who have been putting the foot to the Maple Leafs here in this game. Columbus with 19 points, the Maple Leafs with 29. Jay McClement got it ahead. Fraser McLaren tries to launch it down the boards, and colliding in there was Orr. And they throw a blanket around seven of these guys, and it's Finally comes free as McClement was pulled over by Cam Atkinson. Brought in over the line by Calvert. Squeezes past a hip check from Cody Franson. And Orr starts out at center trying to play it around the defense but couldn't. Now it hits a skate. Played in over the line by Fraser McLaren. They'll try the near side. And Prout gets it in over the line for Columbus. Steering it into the corner. You know how you like to play in certain rinks, Greg? Some of them you just enjoyed. I think that Sergei Bobrovsky enjoys playing here in Toronto. Two games at the Air Canada Centre. He's allowed just one goal against. Had 30 saves and his team have outscored the Leafs 11-1 to thus far. Tonight, though, he hasn't really been a factor. A couple of good saves in the second period. One on Kessel, I can remember with his pad, but he hasn't had many difficult looks so far tonight. On the far side for Como, sending it around back of the net. Humberger, chased by Finuff. Humberger still with it. Ohio State grad with a shot that deflects wide. He'll be interested in the outcome of the Buckeyes and the Wolverines this weekend. Into the corner it goes for Savard. And Finuff now will play it off the boards to center and down. They're going to wave this off saying that Jack Johnson was in position to play it, so the Leafs change. Shooting. Got it ahead, tipped into the zone then by Latestu, and Carl Gunnarsson turns for Toronto. It will be bounced out at center, and Murray is there to feed it back. Intercepted by Kessel, brought to the line. Kessel weaves in and stops. Kessel into the slot with a one-timer coming, and that was blocked on a great block by Boone Jenner. He's had a good game, Joe. I mean, the entire night, he's been very noticeable at all physically. Half of Dorchester and Terry was here to see him play tonight as well, Greg. I'm sure. There's Kessel across the line. Van Riemsdijk tried to make a little toe drag move, and it was broken up. It's a two-on-one. Here's Felino, the wheel man with a pass, and from they score! Five-nothing. Van Riemsdijk turning the puck over, and Ryan Johansson makes it five-nothing Columbus. And how many times have we seen this in the game tonight? A curl and drag at the offensive blue line, a high reach play. They don't work very often. And what thing Columbus has been doing is they've been executing extremely well when they've had an opportunity. Another two-on-one, Felino, an offside winger, little fake, fake, and a perfect pass over Saucer. And then a beautiful one-time shot by Johansson and Reimer with no real chance on this one as he just rifles it right through just above the pad. They're part of the big triumvirate in Portland a few years ago with uh, Toronto prospect Brad Ross and Nino Niederreiter. Those three guys were dominant in the W. Seventh of the year for Johansson. Felino draws the assist. And it is 5 nothing. Nice call here against him. Now we've got Mark Fraser. 
pushing and shoving, and now McLaren arrives on the scene, and Michael Chaput throwing punches. Check that, it's Dalton Prout, rather, and Fraser landing a few. Prout getting a couple of his own in. Boy, they're landing right hands here with great regularity. Fraser, whoa, he changed hands and he landed one right there and down goes Prout. Dalton Prout back into the lineup here for Columbus, sticks up for the youngster. And both players took a lot. Yeah, there's starts here in the boards. And Fraser wants to go after him. And here comes a little bit of help from your friends. And Prout comes right in, picks Fraser out of the crowd, and these guys have a pretty good goal. Well, there's some haymakers going on there, further ever. So, fighting majors to both players, and uh, both of them are a tired bunch. And there's a look at Boone Jenner, and what a terrific years that he had with the Oshawa Generals, a star there. I watched him play junior, and he was a dominating player in junior. Comes up here to the National Hockey League, finding his way, but I think he's going to be a nice, solid power winger in this league for a whole bunch of years. He does a lot of nice little things for you as a forward. A good example of it here with a nice block earlier in this third period. Yeah, Bill, sorry, Joe billeted with Scott Lott, and there, and uh, you know, his parents, Boone, it translated to of the land. Again, going back to his farming route, so a perfect fit for him. Drafted in the second round, 37th overall in 2011. And the Maple Leafs are a man short as a result of the additional penalty. Down low, a pass comes in front of the net, not shooting it there was Wisniewski. Murray to Wisniewski to the point for Johansson. And the shot is a kick save by Weimer, and it's clear to the line, but not a Murray keeps it in. Fraser's cross-checking call is the additional penalty. Back to the blue line again to Murray. Far side was Wisniewski. Wisniewski off a stick and a skate, and it goes out into the center ice area. So the second power play of the game for Columbus. This is just the third minor penalty that's been called in the game. And special teams just have not been a factor as there have not been many hits. Very little physical play in this contest. And it was made up for with that fight. There were plenty of hits there on that boy. Back to the blue line, shooting on the far side. A shot just goes wide of the leaf net. And Jake Gardner launches it out and down the ice. 46 seconds left to go on the power play. Pumhoff steps into his man. Anisimov coming across the middle and Fanuf stepped into him and Anisimov is heading off with a shoulder injury. Johnson goes after Fanuf and Anisimov is going right to the dressing room. He caught him with his head down coming through the neutral zone. Here's another look at it. And he had the puck shoulder. I don't think he stretched up at all. Good shoulder check. A legal hit. And he's getting penalized for it. For what? Wow. So Fanuf is getting a penalty for it. So it's shoulder to shoulder. I don't think he got his head at all on that. It was a good shoulder check. Through the neutral zone. And Ten Isimov minutes. was favoring his shoulder when he went off. Yeah. Carlisle can't believe it either. Yep. Exactly. Randy, we agree. 10.50 the time of the penalty. The Leafs are going to be two men short. This is the fifth time this season that they have been. They have given up one goal over those four minutes and 12 seconds that they've been two men short. Well, with the game 5-0, it's really not a turning point by any stretch of the imagination. 
Wisniewski. With the shot. That's got the rebounding flat. And a pass saved by Reimer. They're trying to jam it in. And finally covered up at the side of the net. So there'll be a face-off in the Toronto zone. All of the Leaf Power plays have been brought to you by Fido. Taking care of you with savings and more. That's the Fido advantage. Reimer here with a terrific save. Loses it but gets his right pad over. And then scrambles and does a nice job doing it as Atkinson's had a good night also. He really down. scored at the American League level. He had 49 goals in 89 games over a year and a bit in the American Hockey League. So this kid knows where the net is. Wozniewski to Felino, trying to sift through. He does. Johnson scores. Johansson snaps it over the glove of Reimer with a two-man advantage. And it is six to nothing. Jeez, he's going to put Bernier in now with 8.36 to go. I'm a little surprised Bernier going in now cold at this part of the game. Although that's a goal that Reimer needs to have. Short side goal. He doesn't get a cross on it. But it's 6-0. I mean, what's the difference at this point? But the change is being made nonetheless. James Reimer will stay in the goal until Bernier arrives. And uh, Jonathan Bernier takes over for the final eight minutes and 36 seconds. And he starts with the team a man short for the next minute 26. Johansson gets the goal. He's at a goal and an assist on the night. And uh, Nick Foligno draws the assist. And it is 6-0 Columbus. Wisniewski also drawing an assist as the Blue Jackets continue to get offense from their defense. Wisniewski now with two assists, 18 points on the year to lead Columbus Blue Jackets in scoring. Latesta to the side of the goal, trying to come out in front, the loose puck to the far side, and it was cleared away by Morgan Riley. At the blue line, Jack Johnson dishes it off on the wing. He's got Latesta breaking down into the spot, doesn't give it to him. Here's Tutin sending it around on the corner boards. Backhanded to the line by Cody Franson. Hacked at, but not cleared. Kept alive now by Como. Into the corner it goes. Franson knocked it away there from Matt Calvert as it goes to the far side. Played back to the blue line. Como, wrist shot coming. And down is Bernier to make the save and hold on. And he didn't have a lot of help. He didn't make a lot of saves either throughout the course of the night in terms of ones he might have had. And Carlisle, though, the only thing I'd be concerned about is Bernier going in cold like this this late in the game. You worry about, you know, pulling the groin as a goalie with 7.31 to go, and he's been sitting over on that bench for an awful long time. Johansson with his second goal of the game. Three-point night. And Nick Foligno picks up his second straight assist. Back to the blue line, far side. The shot is blocked, gobbled up there by Jay McClement. Played ahead for Fanuf, who's out of the penalty box. He winds and shoots. Bobrovsky does another lunge at the puck that makes the save. Done that about three times tonight where this looks like a soccer goalie trying to head it or something. No one asks how. <laughs> Do it yep. in front of him. <laughs> Dominic Hasek, when he arrived on the scene over here, everybody scratched their heads, said that'll never work. Took my job. I scratched mine a lot, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Six nothing Columbus here in the third. Anything for hockey is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Ryan Johansson tonight with a couple of goals. One beautiful feed from Polino as he finds him and then a 
short side goal spelled the end of James Reimer for the evening. Pretty good night uh, for Columbus. Five of their last six games coming to Toronto. They hadn't scored more than two goals in a game, so a bit of a bonanza here for them here tonight. Ryan Johansson, the fourth overall pick in the 2010 draft. Most goals allowed by the Leafs since January of 2013 when they dropped a 7-4 decision to the Islanders here at the ACC. And they embark on a tough road trip which starts in Pittsburgh on Wednesday night at 7.30. And then on to Buffalo where we will enjoy American Thanksgiving. And then into... What are you going to do for American Thanksgiving in Buffalo, Joe? Take a go visit Harry Neal. <laughs> <laughs> you bringing... know you'll have a refreshment for you. Well... Maybe a little turkey, too. I would hope. Hopefully loot bags, Joe. Well, we would like that. Yeah. Be... Have you been invited, though? That's the thing. Well, no, we're that. just going to show up. That's what you do, Greg. That's right. That's it. <laughs> Haven't you heard? <laughs> Down into the Columbus Zona comes after an icing. 6-10 to play here in the third period. And there won't be a traffic jam outside after the game. Most of the time for, are heading for the exits. It's just about time for you to do a little dance or something up here, Joe, at 6 nothing to get us going. That is nothing to watch. <laughs> There's nothing exactly. to see here. Atkinson gets it along the boards, played out into the center ice area. Gardner across the line offside. There's the linesman. And uh, there'll be a face-off outside the blue line. Not all 82 are gems, and this one has lost its luster fairly early on. Two goals, 20 seconds apart in the first period, really spelled the difference and sent the spiral in effect. As Atkinson and Umberger scored 20 seconds apart midway through the first, and the Leafs have never been able to recover or get anything going. Jay McClement. As the puck snared by Bobrovsky and Hell. You know, Joe, that's true. There's no question. They're the quick goals, but they were setting themselves up right through the period. They had a power play early. They didn't really get anything going on in. They gave the puck away far too many times early, which Columbus counted on, and they were playing with fire, and then all of a sudden they got burnt in that first period. Well, they've given the puck away 17 times here tonight, according to the statistical information. And whereas they'd been averaging 15, and as Scott Morrison mentioned, they've gotten that down to 10, well, they are back to uh, doing it again here, and uh, they're piling them up here in this third period as well. Uh, back to the net, Morgan Riley able to get it freed up on the wing, and it is launched on the backhand to center ice. You know, the coaching staff will be thinking a little bit about the team was playing poorly and winning a few games, and normally that dictates the start of a slump because sooner or later it catches up to you and then you have trouble getting your game back and I'm sure these fans are just hoping this is a one-off and that's not the case. And with the infirmary door starting to open in the right direction with Bozak back into the lineup tonight, we'll have to wait and find out the severity of what appeared to be an injury to Joffrey Lupo in the second period that has not allowed him to return here this evening in the third. Here's David Clarkson in with a shot, and it's easily handled by Bobrovsky. Sergei Bobrovsky and the Blue Jackets up 6-0. Six, 6-0 nothing. Six, nothing here. Ken and Ivanka working on Connected. Let's find out what they have in store. Thank you very much. Two weeks ago, Steven Stamkos broke his leg. Today, he walked on his own. Can the secret healer or super healer be at the Olympics? And Bon Jovi, owner of an NFL team in Toronto. Do we all keep the faith, or is he living on a prayer? Joe. Well, this is going to be the second worst, or the worst loss under Randy Carlisle in terms of goal differential. The Leafs were beaten 7-1 by Philadelphia in March of 2012 after Carlisle had taken over the reins from Ron Wilson. So uh, I'm sure the boys are going to hear about it tomorrow. 
think I want to be a Maple Leaf at practice tomorrow. Up tempo. <laughs> and now we've got Cadbury and Calvert throwing punches. And down go both players, and Cadbury and Calvert continue to throw. So Matt Calvert gets a couple of whacks in. Yeah, he was pushed a little bit from behind, and Calvert didn't like it. And then a slash, and he just decided to go. Both young men, 23 years of age. Calvert from Brandon, Manitoba. Tonight's game summary brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen. TV. The kid out west has tossed them a few times as we look at the game summary and Ryan Joss Johansson with a big night. Loophole, a big story in terms of the Leafs as he left in the second period with an injury. And it has not been pretty with the Leafs playing the Blue Jackets this season so far. One more game to redeem themselves, the Maple Leafs do, in this season. The Leafs lead the National Hockey League and fighting majors and have had two more here tonight. As Kessel starts away at center with Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk in, working along the board, sends it around back of the goal. Both players fighting majors. Riley trying to send it into the corner. And the Blue Jackets will work it out into the center ice area. Chuton gets it ahead on the left wing. Matesta rolls it in on goal. And a whistle here. Good news for the Leafs and Randy Carlisle's group is at least we're going to go to a game now that's going to be. There's a look at oh boy, the high stick there. Van Riemsdyk in the box. Yep. The good news for the Maple Leafs getting back to that thought is at least the next game they're going to play a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins where you better be ready and have a little edge going into that game or you're really going to get embarrassed. So that will help the cause a little bit in their next game. 16-27, the time of the penalty. High sticking for Van Riemsdyk, and Columbus is two for three with the man advantage and seven shots. They have won the specialty team battle tonight. The Leafs are 6-0-1 when they have won the special teams battle in a hockey game thus far this season, but that will not be the case here this evening. As it is shot down the ice by Jared Smithson. Trevor Smith and Peter Holland were scratches tonight along with Paul Ranger. And it'll be snapped into the zone by Wisniewski. Grabbed off by Gardner. And he'll bank it ahead at center for Kuhlman who got it across the line but couldn't get around. Dalton Prout and it's back in behind the net. Polino or Ryan Johansson. Johansson with two goals on the night. Gets it into the corner. Around back of the goal. Battling for it for enough. 2.21 to go. Back to the blue line it comes. Clout working down the boards. Polino trying to help out. Gets it into the corner. Johansson looking for the hat trick here tonight. Far side. First shot coming, and it's deflected wide of the net by Umberger. Polino in the corner. 26 seconds to go in the period, or in the penalty. Saucer back to the blue line. David Savard near side. Prout gets it in front of the net. And couldn't get a shot away in the backhand, and Prout has it on the near board. And it's cut off there by Jake Gardner, and he plays it out and down the ice. Minute and a half to go in this one, and it has been all Columbus Blue Jackets, who will finish off their long road trip on a very successful page here tonight. They've got two goals from Ryan Johansson, singles from Atkinson, Humberger, Skilly, and Murray. Funny trip for them. They get blown out by Edmonton, and they beat Calgary. And they get blown out by Vancouver. And then they come in here and win big. Rattle down into the Toronto zone and 
Bernier had to make sure that didn't bound out in front of the net. And those still in attendance saluting Andy Frost's warning that there's only a minute left of this entertainment. What are you doing standing up, Joe? cheering. <laughs> I'm cemented here in the chair. Brought out now on the left wing for Van Riemsdyk. Played to an open wing. Mark Fraser was heading for the bench. Skilly in. Tries to center. He did. Hit the goal post. Boom. Jenner hit the post. And there's Bozak back the other way. Bozak around back of the goal. Couldn't get it in front. Ties up his man along the wall. Back to the blue line to Gardner. Back along it goes to Kessel. Kessel in front of the net for Gardner. Couldn't get a shot. Seven seconds left. And Sergei Bobrovsky is going to record his fifth career shutout if he can withstand the next 2.3 seconds of the third period. Well, the only story for the Maple Leafs, really, and it's not a good one besides the game, which wasn't a good one either, is Joffrey Lupa. Here he is in the corner. He just seems to trip up there a little bit. And then he gets shoved into the boards, and when that happened, he came up favoring his right leg. And there's the horn that ends the game. Bobrovsky with his fifth career shutout. And the Maple Leafs drop a 6 to nothing stinker here to the Columbus Blue Jackets. You took the words out of my mouth, Joe, with the word. A stinker. Right from the very start for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they had nothing going for them. Give the Blue Jackets credit. They came in here all excited to play in this market. They've got a few kids from Ontario, and they played well. Tonight's three stars brought to you by Molson, Canadian diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Ryan Johansson, two goals and an assist. Sergei Bobrovsky, 18 saves, as we mentioned, his fifth career shutout. Ryan Murray gets a goal and a helper. So the Leafs will embark on a tough three-game road trip for the remainder of the week after dropping a 6-0 decision here to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Kenneth Abok is standing by with Connected. Thanks for being with us.